Well, that's better than any way I could start this fucking show. <laughs> Welcome back, guys. We are playing Day of the Tentacle. Okay, that's John Hancock. I thought that's George Washington. My bad. Yo. Hello. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> What's up, you cold? Cold? I'm freezing. Why don't you build a fire? Well, I keep asking Jefferson to build a fire, but he won't. Says he needs the log for posterity and won't part with it. <laughs> He's going to give the log to starving children? I don't get any respect around here. Why, I bet if George I spent the winter in Valley Forge, Washington was cold, we'd get some heat in here. <laughs> well, basically, if you know John Hancock, he's the money man. Or as Magic Johnson would say, the Magic Man. <laughs> he funded everything. He is a, you know, basically the amount of bankroll he had. Why wouldn't you fucking sign your name that big? <laughs> How come you sign your name so big? A stigmatism. <laughs> you mean you have, like, a childhood complex? All right. The, the, the truth is that a friend once told me that women go c c crazy over guys with a big signature. <laughs> what are you guys doing in here? We're writing a... a uh, writing the... We're drafting a constitution for the United States. Don't say draft. You'll only make me colder. Wimp. <laughs> Jefferson don't give a fuck, man. <laughs> Why don't you have some hot coffee? Oh, I can't stand coffee. It makes me irritable and want to bang my head against the walls. Oh, I can relate. Well, please don't do it around here. Awesome blanket there, dude. Thank you. It was given to me by my d dear old colorblind Aunt Hattie. Shouldn't you guys be working instead of just sitting there? Writer's block. We can't think of any um, amendments or anything, so we put a suggestion box over there. I don't suppose you have any br brilliant ideas? You could guarantee the right to free speech. Hmm, free speech? No, that'll never work. Well, I gotta go, dude. <laughs> It's a little cage with a canary in it, perched above a little lever. Huh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm a 
get a screenshot. I just like that. He's cold. Ye old Jorge does not give a fuck. And having migraines every day too. Yeah, I can relate to Jefferson. We all look like that. <laughs> Stolen from the desk of George Washington. They don't seem to have gotten too far. It looks like a martini shaker. Hey, tall, dark, and spiffy, my name's Hoagie. Well, how quaint. I am, of course, Thomas Jefferson, noted scholar, musician, horseman, student of the sciences, member of the bar. Oh, sure, I've heard of you, dude. What's in the can, Tommy? Thomas. My name is Thomas, and this, my chubby friend, is a time capsule <laughs> filled with remembrances of our time to be revealed 400 years hence. So, how's the time capsule going? I'm sorry to say that except for my log, we haven't got a thing. Has anyone ever told you you're a very snappy dresser? Why, yes. I studied at Virginia Coat and Technical, where I majored in color theory. I was captain of the varsity cravat team. Those are impressive credentials, Tom. Thomas. <laughs> Could you start a fire, please? I'd love to oblige you, young man, but I can't. This is the only log, and I'm saving it for posterity. How can you let Hancock suffer like that? A real man is warmed by the fires of his spirit. You should listen to Washington <laughs> relate his experiences at Valley Forge and take heed. <laughs> yeah, I know my voice is off today because I don't feel good. Well, I didn't. I feel good now. You know, I'm medicated, but there's my voice off. Well, that's funny. <laughs> Real men warm themselves by the fires of life. Buck up, pussy. <laughs> Meanwhile, he's shivering to death, poor guy. Look, I'm a Texan stuck up in Yankee land. I can relate, man. I mean, I'm from fucking El Paso. <laughs> So yeah, in Yankee land, I look like that a lot. Dude, is that like the Constitution? Right now, it's just a Constitution, I'm afraid. We hit a slight creative block right after the preamble. That's why we put up a suggestion box over there. Dude, I loved your work on the Declaration of Independence. Ah, thank you. What was your favorite part? <laughs> I like the we the people part. That's not in the declaration of... Say, that's not bad. Maybe we can use it. <laughs> well, later, dude. What? What's going to happen later? <laughs> Meanwhile, look at George over here, not giving a fuck. Shit, if I was George, I wouldn't give a fuck either. Excuse me. Yes? What are you looking at out there? 
the future of our nation. That young couple by the tree? No, no. I was just admiring my reflection in the window. Striking, <laughs> aren't I? Whoa, you're like George Washington. Very much like him, according to my wife, Mrs. Washington. <laughs> awesome. Indeed. <laughs> I do wonder about these times. <laughs> like right now, I, I do think if you set off some of George Washington, yeah, he'd know what it would mean. <laughs> <laughs> or at least he won't give a fuck like this and just pretend. Cold enough for you? Cold? Why, you don't know the meaning of the word. I spent a winter at Valley Forge. Now that was cold. Why, my spit would freeze before it hit the ground. Cool. Extremely. <laughs> Excuse me. Yes? Is it true about you and the cherry tree? Oh yes, it's quite true. Why, I've cut down acres of cherry trees in my day. <laughs> Would you give me a demonstration? I don't see why I should. Weren't you president or something? Yes, I expect to be chosen president unanimously. I'm very well connected. Do you think I should be the ecology president or the education president? <laughs> I'm a big fan of education. Really? How surprising. <laughs> we might have to come back with an axe. It's been forever since I played this. Do you really have wooden teeth? As a matter of fact, I do make use of artificial teeth. I find them to be far superior to the ordinary enamel variety. <laughs> Where could I get some of those? They're rather expensive. Mine were custom made for me by my good friend, Paul Revere. Didn't he ride a horse through town naked? I believe you have him confused with someone else. <laughs> My Uncle Henry has false teeth too. Fascinating, I'm sure. Now what are you looking at out there? There are two sides to everything, you know that, my boy? What issue are you contemplating? What do you think? Is my left side better or my right? <laughs> so I'm guessing we gotta talk to him again for these two things. Gee, I gotta go now. Indubitably. They don't seem to have gotten too far. Yeah. 
Let's look around more. It's one of those pulley things. Nah. It's one of those pulley things. Hmm, that must be for later. It's blocked up with somebody's bed. Looks like someone's bedroom. <laughs> oh, hey, putty cat. Mangy flea bitten rat bat and mouse muncher. Mangy flea bitten rat bat and mouse muncher. Let's dig these. <laughs> I don't wanna. Oh. I don't wanna. I like it the way it is. I don't wanna. Alright, we're gonna have to come back. What do you suppose happened to Hamilton and Madison? Yes, I'm certain we told them to come on Thursday. I'll wager Madison's with that woman who makes the cupcakes again, and Hamilton's probably gotten himself into another fight. I bet they show up late and take all the credit for our work. <laughs> Hi. Did I mention how great your teeth look? Thanks again. <laughs> I didn't think horses could talk. Maybe they just never had anything to say to you. Ever think of that? You mean horses have been snubbing me my whole life? Yeah, if you want to put it that way. Well, I gotta go. See you later. <laughs> the horse soaks his dentures in here. I wonder if there's anything to eat in it. These dudes might get mad. Looks like he spent a lot of time in there. Hey, what's that on the plans? It looks like a secret backwards message. Oh, it's just a coffee stain. 
I don't quite see how it can fly. I don't understand that technical stuff. Well, that wouldn't be very nice. <laughs> Stars and stripes, dull, dull, dull. Hey, don't criticize unless you got a better idea. I guess this is George Washington's bed. That would not be respectful. Besides, I might get caught. It's totally covered with crud. players of all time. I mean, ben Franklin is proof that the game is the game. Don't matter how you look. It's how you play it. <laughs> Hi there, mister. Franklin! Ben Franklin! Soon to be known as the inventor of electricity! Uh, do you know Red Edison? He's a scientist guy, too. Red Edison? A scientist? He's just an innkeeper who pretends to be a scientist, and he's not very good at doing either one. I can't believe Washington and Jefferson picked his inn, of all places, to write our Constitution. <laughs> It's like I talked him up and he sounds like that. Shouldn't you say the discoverer of electricity? You think the ultimate power in the universe is just under some rock waiting to be discovered? Ha! I, Ben Franklin, am going to summon power from the sky by sheer force of genius! <laughs> I could use a little power myself for my time machine. There will be power enough for all in time. There aren't any time machines yet anyway. That's next summer's project. <laughs> How exactly are you going to do that power luring? Using one of my newest inventions. 
I like to call it the Francocopter. <laughs> That's a kite, Ben. They've been around for thousands of years. Oh, sure, as toys. But this one is a letter to the gods. It says, Dear Thor, just one drop of your mighty juice in the hands of a genius like me could illuminate the entire world. Love, Ben. I hope you wrote it in Swedish so Thor can read it. Or were those guys Norwegian? I was speaking figuratively. What actually is happening is that I'm waiting for lightning to strike my kite. And then what? And then the electricity charges the kite. <laughs> and then what? Then the electricity travels down the string. And then what? It charges me, of course. <laughs> and then what? I glow with its almighty power. And then what? I use its power to make the world a better place. And then what? The world kneels before me, asking me to guide it with my mighty benevolence. And then what? I have all annoying pests like you locked up. And then what? Shot. Oh, I see. <laughs> Aren't you missing a key or something? The key to discovery is daring intellect, my boy. Daring intellect and rigorous science. No, I mean a real key key. You mean the where the heck did I put my keys kind of key? Yeah. That's a manual device. It needs no power. Seriously, man, what are you thinking? Isn't it too sunny for lightning? Shh. I know that. I'm just trying to keep my grant going until we get a storm. Well, I'm going to back away now, just in case. Carry on. <laughs> I think it's the accent, but this version of Ben's a douchebag. Huh, this door appears to be locked. Grody. Huh, this door appears to be locked. It's unplugged. So as soon as Hoagie gets that battery working, we're set. I'm afraid not. We still need a diamond for the main unit. And your friend in the future needs power too, if she's still alive. Alive? Get me out of here. I like trees and everything, but this one has got to go. The Chicago Manual of Thermodynamic Flux Induction Circuit Design. Great stuff! What's up? Know where I can get some vinegar? Maybe I could make some vinegar.
Know where I can get some gold? Maybe a gold watch? Great hat, man. Later, dude. Hey, what is it this time? What was it you needed for that battery again? Oil, vinegar, and gold. Let me know if you happen across any. Ah, excellent! I need that for my super battery. It's covered with plans and junk. It's covered with plans and junk. It looks more like a raincoat than a lab coat. I can't open it. Hey, only employees are allowed to use that lab coat. <laughs> Technically, I'm working for you, bro. Get me a battery. The Constitutional Convention invites your comments, critiques, amendments to the Constitution. You're brilliant. What a novel design. Come to Baltimore at once. Oh, I gotta give that to Ben. Bitcha. Bitcha. It's already open. It's a little cage with a canary in it, perched above a little lever. Huh. You're brilliant. What a novel design. Come to Baltimore at once. I don't wanna. I don't wanna. I'm pretty sure this goes to him.
I like their, like these old games, there's an order to, and I'm not using a walkthrough, obviously. I don't wanna. You're brilliant, what a novel design. Come to Baltimore at once. Maybe give that the... Uh... Those founding fathers are driving me nuts. Flag design changes every five minutes. Well, as soon as I'm done with this, I'm making them a flag ready or not. It's open. Yeah, that's where we got that. Okay, this does go to Red Edison in the basement. It's his house. So I think you need the key off Franklin to get in there. I don't wanna. I don't wanna. It looks like a martini shaker. Stolen from the desk of George Washington. Oh, I don't know about gold, but would gold plated work? Hey, keep your hands off that! <laughs> they don't seem to have gotten too far. Hey, keep your hands off that! Yo. Please, let me suffer in peace. Oh, poor guy. I don't wanna. I don't wanna. I don't wanna. Mangy flea bitten rat fatten mouse muncher.
it's blocked up with somebody's bed. It's one of those pulley things. All right, guys, I'm obviously not using a walkthrough. Yeah, I haven't played this since fourth grade, and it's obvious. God, that's like 20, 25 years. No wonder I don't remember anything besides the fact this game's awesome. Well, let us save. guys I'm gonna go ahead and call it here for this episode yeah I am lost I have no clue what to do it's all right though this game's fun like comment share subscribe um if you want to give me a hint without ruining it nah fuck that don't do that I don't want to spoil it for myself I'll figure it out but yeah guys, later. <laughs>